Scotty Parker, Wayne Rainey, Jay Springsteen, and Mike Garrison continue to play cat and mouse with Wayne Rainey, showing the factory Harleys he was not going to settle for third place. Mike, how important is it just to win one of these heat races here? Well, winning a heat race sometimes is hard as winning the main event and almost as important because all these heats are timed. And you've got four different heat races, four different winners, but only two riders can fit on that groove for the start. And you want to be one of the fastest two heats so that you'll start on the groove and be in the front of the pack for the start of the main event. Another advantage to winning a heat race is getting yourself mentally prepared for the main event because these riders after this heat race will go back and sit there and play strategy. Scotty Parker swept by Rainey and Jay Springsteen slipped off the groove and let Mike Garrison through to third place. Mike, we just saw Springsteen slip off that black groove and lose speed, time, and position. You've talked about the groove before. Just what is it and why is it so important? Well, the groove is the black part of the racetrack. That's what the riders are on right now. Earlier this week, this track was a horse track. And the way that groove develops is a lot of practice and race time. This weekend, we had a complete racing program last night. And even last night, the groove started getting laid down. The riders came out today. After practice, the groove started getting blacker and wider. And I think you'll see today, the more the racing goes on, the wider that groove's going to get. And as the groove gets wider, we should see all the Indy track records broke today. At this point in the second heat race, it was Scotty Parker leading Wayne Rainey. Springsteen was in third. In this heat, the Harleys only have to compete against themselves. In the final, they'll have to compete against the more powerful Hondas. We asked Jay Springsteen whether the Harley can run with the Honda. Well, we're starting to get a little closer to run with the guys. The Hondas are really exceptional fast, and um, it's just taking us a little bit longer to get everything dialed in so that we can run with them. On the white flag lap, Scotty Parker led Wayne Rainey and Springsteen down the back straight, but Jay threaded the needle between Parker and the wall, totally off the groove to pass by Parker and set himself up to draft Rainey, a perfect setup by the winningest dirt track racer ever. Ra Rainey needed all the horsepower his Lawwell Harley could muster to stay in the lead, but at the propitious moment, Springer pulled to the right out of Rainey's draft to take the checkered flag ahead of Rainey and Scott Parker. Looking at it from another angle, you can see it was almost a dead heat with Springer and Parker making a sandwich out of Wayne Rainey. One of the big questions always asked to me when I raced was, what happens if you go out and practice and the bike doesn't work? Well, there's a few changes that can be made to make the motorcycle actually work for the racetrack. For example, last night, Scotty Parker was very fast in the cushion when the track was damp. And today, with a hard black groove, there may be adjustments he's going to have to make. One adjustment that he can make is the rear shocks. The shocks back here, I'm sure Bill Warner, his tuner, has different lengths, somewhere between 13 and 13 and a half inch. When he comes in, if he's having a traction problem, they may change the rear shocks to get more traction. When you get more traction, another problem that might occur is the front end may push. At the apex, at over 90 miles an hour, right in the middle of the turn, the front end may tend to wash out from under you. So how do you compensate for that? Well, there's pinch bolts here for the front forks. These front forks are fully adjustable up and down. There's dampening that can be changed. So the force can be adjusted to compensate for what you do to the rear end. This motorcycle is probably one of the most top 750cc Harley Davidsons on the circuit. The rider has to make those adjustments. He has to come in and talk to his tuner. But that's not all he has to worry about. Another thing that he'll have to be concerned with today is gearing. Over here is a stack of gearing that the rider can come in and choose. There's one tooth increments. The rider will come in and say, maybe the motorcycle is peeking out too soon. He'll actually take off a tooth or maybe two. These are just a few of the things that the rider and the tuner must go over today in each other's mind and try to figure out what's going to work the best. For King, Kenny Roberts. Kenny, it's been eight years since you raced a mile dirt track. Why did you come out of retirement to run the Springfield Mile? I don't have the slightest idea. <laughs> I, uh, mile racing has always been my favorite. When I went to Europe, I had a real hectic schedule and uh, didn't allow me to do any of the mile racing. Now that I've slowed the schedule down in Europe, I have a chance to do some racing. And I came here last year and uh, did a little uh, TV stuff and said, boy, if I'm going to come back to a mile race and do a mile, I want it to be this one because uh, it's fast and it's a good racetrack. And, you know, it's, it's nice to come back to a racetrack you know you can pass on, you know you can do a good job if you can do a good job. So this is why I'm here. We're going to find out right now if Kenny Roberts can still do the job in heat race number four. He'll meet the likes of Tommy Maitland, Peter Hook, Steve Moorhead, Jim Felice. The lineup right alongside number nine, his old rival, Jay Springsteen, in this all Harley Davidson heat. And right now, we want to take you back to one year ago today. As Kenny Roberts pulls his number two to the line, let's hear Kenny Roberts' television commentator talking about Springfield dirt. This dirt is what the Springfield track is made out of, black gumbo. 
is good for raising corn. The thing that the riders are going to be looking for today is how to set their bike up to get the most possible traction with this dirt. And whoever can do that is going to win this race. Another thing about this dirt, it's the fastest dirt in the world. The light goes green, and Kenny Roberts is back on the mile. They thunder.